Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is The Daily Show. I'm your host, Khalid Mohidin, and this is where we talk about all the major talking points in South African cricket. Now, we've got quite a lot to get through. There's obviously been a lot of IPL performances, and there's also been some unveiling of captains. Before we get into the major stories of today, please click subscribe, click the notification bell, become a part of this community, become a part of this family. We need your help to grow. So without further ado, let's get into the topics of today. Yesterday, we spoke about the Cobras obviously unveiling Zubair Hamza as their four-day skipper. We also announced that it's going to be a 2nd November start for the four-day franchise series. So it's only fitting that there are more captains being revealed for the new season. The Dolphins announced today that Marcus Ackerman will be their four-day captain, where Keshav Maharaj will take the white ball format. Now, Marcus Ackerman is a young, talented batsman across all formats. We know how amazing he was for the Cape Town Blitz in the shorter formats, but it's a really good step by the Dolphins to take such a positive, bold move forward, selecting such a young captain to lead their four-day side. Now, people don't actually realize that Marcus is a very good four-day cricketer as well. But in an exclusive interview that we had with Marcus Ackerman, he expressed his desire to be able to turn those half-centuries into centuries and to score bigger runs for the Dolphins. So what I'm going to do for you is give you a short clip of Marcus Ackerman's interview with Cricket Fanatics magazine so that you guys can get to know him a little better. I obviously made my debut for the Lions in, in the Ram Slam, I think it was three years ago now, I'm not sure. Yeah, what, yeah I think it was three years ago. Um, I, then, I then got to a stage where I, I just didn't really see that there was much happening for me on that side. Um, there's a lot of good players at that time that were playing for the Lions. Um, wow. And I, I just I got an opportunity. I saw a little gap for me on this side um, in KZN. And I thought, you know, I was ready for a change, you know, just to, I don't know, it was just the heat of the moment. It was a couple of days where I decided, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a move. Uh, and, you know, CEO Heinrich Stratum came to me and he's like, listen, we've we would like you to be here and uh, we can we see a future for you. And I thought, you know what, um, there's some poor communications from where I was at the moment uh, in the high felt. So I thought, you know what, let me let me make the move. Um, and it was and it was very beneficial to me. Um, just uh, I was working at that stage when I moved to KZ and I was working with Roger Telemarcus and our assistant coach, Doc Zulu. Mm. And um, we, had, we had a really good team because a lot of the guys that are have played for South Africa now. I said Nero Mutsasami, Calvin Savage, Darren Dupavillon, Keith Dajin, those Oaks were all those guys were all playing at the stage for the co coastal team. And we had a really good team and we ended up winning the three day competition um the season I moved. Um I then obviously got I was fortunate enough to to play a few games for the Dolphins um the end of that the end of that the year um where I was working with Grant Morgan. Um, and yeah, you know, and just get a, get a taste of the Dolphins of you know, franchise cricket really at that stage because I was quite I was quite young when I just made my debut and I wasn't really ready to be honest. Um, and then yeah, when I got the opportunity, um, obviously tried to just it was just so nice to play at that level. I just didn't want to I didn't want to turn back. I didn't want to go back down to the to the semi pro system. So I just wanted to really make sure I put in performances and I just really wanted it badly. So I just try to obviously make as much runs as I can and just contribute as much as I could at that yeah. stage. Of course, yeah. And obviously, I um, had a great season last season. I'm a very young team. I feel that going forward now with the new new signings that you guys have made, etc. And um, I want to ask you about that because if you look around the provinces and you look around the, the different franchises at the moment, uh uh, South Africa is in a very delicate phase at the moment with regards to franchise cricket and uh, the revolutions that's happening in the, in the national team as well as in franchise level. Where a lot of the senior guys are retiring and the younger guys now to take more of leadership roles. Um, can you maybe talk to me about that with regards to your role in the, at the Dolphins and who you get along with well in the side? Um, the Dolphins went through a bit of a trans a transition of between a couple of senior men leaving um, yeah. and then obviously a couple changes and new guys coming in now. Um, I think with a new coach, I think Imran Khan has been outstanding for us um, with uh, with um, Doozy and our uh, assistant coach Quentin. Um, he's been, they've been outstanding for us. I mean, we, we wanted to create, create a new culture at the Dolphins. 
Um, we wanted to co start competing at the at the highest level. Make sure instead of just you know instead of us just all having in individual performances, we wanted to start performing as a team, and we start wanted to create a culture where we can start winning and compete to win trophies and. Uh, Yes, we were a young team, and in the start of the season, the first few games were quite tough, and we wanted to find our, that identity of the Dolphins and try to get back to, to a, you know, a competitive environment. And you know, I I, th I think that I get get on pretty well with every single player in our team. Um, you know, I try to reach out as much as I can. It's not always easy. We have uh, various uh, ages in our team and various cultures in our team, so it's difficult to obviously. Um, you know, uh, be friends with everyone on a personal level. But uh, I think in a team environment, our, the, the relationships I have with uh, most of the players are, are pretty good. Mm. Cool. So I want to get to know a little bit more about your style of batting and obviously um, the way you approach your batting, etc. And what what makes you special on the field, etc. So I thought I'm going to bring on a buddy to help me out. So how's it, Grant? Uh, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's it all fit? How you guys doing? Yeah, we good. Eh? How are you? <laughs> yeah, good. Man. Yeah, so like the last time I was going to do this in reverse, um, <laughs> but uh, it didn't really work out. Marcus was quite busy that day. So um, I thought I'll do it now in return to you. And now we can have a nice discussion about um, you guys. Obviously, Grant. You would have been in situations when um, you're batting or and you stay in and there's a wicket that falls, you're opening, you use your opening partner and this guy will come walk into, out in the middle. Um, talk to me about him as a batsman and what makes him special. And then afterwards, you can go into some of the questions that you maybe have for him. Um, I think uh, Marcus's best attributes is probably he's so commanding. You know what I mean? Like, he, I know he's a little guy, uh, but... Um, <laughs> You know, he has he has a real big presence about him when he walks the juice. So I think that's probably his main attribute. Um, I wouldn't say he's carefree. I think people get that wrong. I don't think he's a carefree batter. I think he really values the way he bats. He values his wicket. He values the amount of runs he puts on the board. Um, so I wouldn't call him carefree, but he is... Uh, he plays a few more shots than most, but... I think it's calculated. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see the full video, click the eye on the screen and you can go watch that full on lockdown episode with Marcus Ackerman. So in other news, we know that the IPL is in full swing and Faf Duplessis once again in yesterday's match hit a massive 72 of 37 balls for the Chennai Super Kings. If you want to see the highlights of Faf Duplessis' innings, you can go to cricketfanaticsmag.com. We have all the highlights over there which shows his entire innings and the sixes that he hit, etc, etc, etc. But as we have been doing recently on the channel, we're going to bring on our friend Aditya on the channel to talk to us about what happened in that match between CSK and RR. So welcome back, Aditya. I'm so excited to chat to you once again. I know we've been doing this Proteus Watch consistently after specific games. Hopefully we can get back onto that maybe on Thursday evening or Friday or on the weekend if there's more games happening and Proteus players obviously performed. I was quite nervous yeah. yesterday because I was looking at the performances and I was like, oh, maybe South Africans are not going to perform, especially the way Lungin Giri um, struggled yesterday, especially in that last over against Shafra Archer. Um, should we talk about the negatives first? Let's talk about the negatives first. Um, tell me about um, your what your assessment is about Lungingidi in that particular game. It was kind of a reverse from the f previous game where he started off poorly and ended off well, whereas this one he started off well and then ended off poorly. Right. I I wouldn't call it negatives because I think Sharjah has been a bowler's graveyard for for decades now <laughs> and. I think just about any bowler would have struggled on that pitch and mm -hmm. that ground. It's the smallest ground in the UAE. So I'm not surprised that he went for runs. And it's also one of the first sort of high profile games in Sharjah in quite a while. Mm. So I don't I don't know if there's a lot of data that the China Super Kings could have relied on, uh, you know, to to really get a sense of where they should have bowled, where they could have bowled, mm -hmm. and so on. So, you know, I wouldn't be too harsh on on any of the bowlers yeah. tonight because 
you know they were going to uh, they were going to get taken apart and um eventually even the rajasthan royals it's a pretty solid batting lineup mm-hmm. so uh, i'm not surprised yeah i I'm, i'm looking at it from a positive point of view because i'm a very much of an optimist um i wanted uh, the reason i mentioned negativities of, of, of the game is because i know there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to say like why didn't you talk about lungingiri in the way performed so i'm going to look at it from a positive way as well and say that this was amazing practice for him because at, for the proteas if that november tour from england coming down to south africa happens which we hope and cross fingers that it does um from our sources that we have it seems like it's going to happen and as long as the the government approves it etc but it's good practice for lungi especially for the t20 world yeah. cup it's a pity that it was jofra archer that did it to you because i mean you know the rivalry between fast bowlers uh but yeah. it was from a neutral perspective it must have been amazing to watch <laughs> I, you know i think just about even assuming it was jof raja who was bowling instead of lungi and there was another player that it was the last tour they were going to go for glory and mm-hmm. i think it was good jofra connected and he hit a few and that's great but mm-hmm. it's it's very hard to say that jofra was bowling and someone else is batting that jofra wouldn't yeah. have gotten taken apart you know yeah so, and he did i think like in the second innings he got hit pretty badly so yeah And they yeah. say there's a there's a Jofra Archer tweet for everything, and someone actually pulled up that tweet of six 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 from twenty fifteen, from five years ago. <laughs> That's incredible. Let's talk about the massive performance of the day. Obviously, Samson yeah. amazing innings, obviously, and of course, um, Steve Smith as well. But obviously, we we on Proteus watch here. So Faf Duplessis, yeah. I mean, on his own, really trying to carry that team to over the line, and and really really got them close. I mean, amazing yeah. innings from him. What What is Faf doing right this campaign? What do you think it is? He's just that good, <laughs> and you know he's uh, he's proving it, and he has been doing it for a long time. But mm-hmm. I think because the way he plays is a bit understated, and that's why oftentimes he he doesn't really get a lot of the attention that he deserves. Mm-hmm. But you look at yesterday's game, for example, Faf's role in this team is to bat as long as possible. and in yeah. a chase to take the team to take the chase as deep as possible so that's what he started to do as well because Shane Watson had started to connect a few and he was striking at 157 before he got out to the spinner yeah. and Murli Vijay departed soon after so fast role was to get get the team going get closer to uh, to the final total and at number 4 Sam Curran came in which was uh, a wonderful sort of tactical mm. move because Sam Curran was obviously supposed to take the bowlers apart and he did for uh, you know for a short while but then i think there was a little bit of a mistake there because Kedar Jadhav who hasn't played uh, competitive cricket for at least last 10 months sure. he came in and he was struggling to connect a few mm. so that my view put additional pressure on Faf because yeah. i think if MS Dhoni had come in and both of them were knocking around mm. and Let's not forget both Faf and Emma Stoney run very well between the wickets. Yeah, they're phenomenally quick. But then they lost two quick wickets, and then Emma Stoney was struggling as well. So it was up to Faf to really take on the bowlers. Otherwise, they were not going to get anywhere closer to the target. And you yeah. look at the numbers. In his first 18 balls, he scored 17 runs. Of his next 19 balls, he scored 55 runs. Yeah, these are staggering numbers. <laughs> these are amazing numbers. <laughs> These are staggering numbers, and uh, if he was there for another over or two, I think he would have taken them across the line. But mm-hmm. um, you know, there was there was a fair bit of uh, comment going around in in a lot of the analysis post game, you know, about MS Dhoni's batting position, about when Faf launched, and so on. But I think it was mainly about the switching of roles and just yeah. the fact that some of the other batsmen sort of struggled to get going. which is why he ultimately had to take it upon himself but mm. all in all it was uh, a mighty fine uh, performance and um, i think if there was ever any doubt about his pedigree as a t20 batsman i don't know what more he needs to do yeah exactly so guys we have that obviously on the site you can go to cricketfanaticsmag.com to go find that highlights of the of the particular game that we're talking about in Faf's innings i'm going to go out on a limb and say that Faf should be back in that protea side i don't i think he's vital for that t20 world cup that number 3 position is calling his name he's just the perfect person for that position he showed that he can play in an anchor role 
as well as switch it on when he needs to. So I, I think he's, with the knowledge that he has of Indian conditions as well when that World Cup happens, I mean, I think he's going to be the perfect person for that. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell for all future episodes. Don't forget to download the latest issue of the magazine. The link is on the screen, and the link is in the description. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys very, very soon.